Back in 2017, I started seeing videos about Eurorack, and I got kind of obsessed. But back then, I never had the budget to afford anything of the sort, really. I started watching videos by Christian Henson and all his sort of modular series, modular Mondays. It was amazing, and I loved it. But I. You know, it was a bit of a dream, a uh, bit of a pipe dream at the time. But then about two years ago, I started to be able to afford some modules for myself. So I took the plunge into modular, into Eurorack, and I started buying some. And now uh, in, in 2023, I've got a really nice, beautiful setup um, with, with lots of different modules in there. And I can use it for lots of different things in my composing tools. Uh, and, and, I, and I love it. But could I have saved myself some money along the way with plugins? Um, I think the answer is definitely yes, but there's different reasons for buying modular that even though you can do similar things with software, there's still a good reason to buy the hardware version instead, despite the price. So today I want to talk about Fracture Sounds Granulate and I want to go into a bit of detail about what makes it any different or the same to Mutable Instruments Beads, which is an amazing modular Eurorack module, which is essentially a granular synthesizer that has a built-in wavetable oscillator compared to Granulate, the plugin um, for Contact, which is a, again a granular synthesizer, but um, it's more based around taking and loading in samples uh, messing with the samples, creating instruments to play out of it as well. Um, but you can do similar things with it, so let's jump into it. But first of all, please do subscribe and give the video a thumbs up, I'd really appreciate it. So let's break down some of the comparison points. First of all, the price. What's the difference? Well, on the one hand, you have Granulate, which is £69 dollars in Euros. But on the other hand, you've got Mutable Instrument Bees at around £350. But there's a bunch of reasons that you might want one over the other for your specific needs. So let's go into that and, and, and speak a little bit more detail about that. So to start with, I kind of want to just go over the overall features of everything. So I've got Granulate up here. And um, what I've got, I've loaded in a sample from, um, I was be I've been using Granulate a little bit um, in, in this score I'm doing for an advert and um, basically what's really cool about it similar to beads is you've got this sort of sample loading area which allows you to kind of you know load a sample into the plugin and then you can mess around with it as much as you want and and it's it's the same kind of thing on beads so you load in a sample um, and you've got a little knob which allows you to go back and forth throughout the loop um, and uh, you know, just like in this, you can kind of see see how much you want to move around, see how big the sample chunk is you want, so you can change the size of it. You can change the amount of time that you're sort of going over it and how quickly it's being processed. And then to add to that, you've also got these kind of grains um, where basically you have the a sort of density level where you can change how dense it is and a sort of randomness to it or if you want a really rigid rhythmic kind of um, gr granular thing going on. So um, with this for example, it's a, I would say that one where, where beads really comes into its strength is more ambient stuff and that's not necessarily true that granulate doesn't have that. But I think beads is really, really good at taking chunks and throwing them out as beads, if you see what I mean. Uh, you kind of, you put them in there as like a sound and it churns it up into all of these really nice beads and you can reverse them uh, and it's kind of really nice and poppy and, you know, soupy and delicious. Whereas I think granulate is more suited for creating pads that you can kind of play or playing like really really cool kind of rhythms and stuff so there that's I, I mean I'm sure you can do a lot of stuff with granulate in the same way that you could with beads but in that sense I think that that's a kind of good difference between the two um, and probably for me I would use granulate more for the pad type sounds or the um, rhythmic kind of stuff whereas beads I would use for more kind of um, BD type stuff and I can give you an example of that now so I've got this piano sample loaded into granulate here and what we've got is this um, basically it's, it's a kind of big swell going up a big arpeggio going up the piano um, and I can show you the actual sound of it here I think it's just this um, Not sure why that didn't play. Anyway, uh, there's actually a live version of it too. It's 
So it's just that basically. And uh, in the granulate, um, I've just put it in here. And what you can do is you load it into the sample. You basically load it in through the mapping editor in, in contact. Um, and then you just play the note and it plays the sample through. So you can do a lot with this. You can change it so that it's rhythmic, free, random. This is getting very similar to beads now. Change the shape of the grain. Now this is kind of interesting because what we've got going on here as a randomization is that you can do this with beads too. There's actually um, a tuning parameter here which you can obviously just do up here too. But what's happening is that I think there's like a routing happening where um, there's kind of like an LFO triggering the tuning to go all over the place, except I don't think that it's set in the routing se uh, section of this. I actually think that it's just set um, as part of this particular parameter. There's just a, a, a certain degree of randomness happening where it's moving around. But on beads, you can plug an LFO into, or any other modulation source for that matter, straight into the pitch wheel, and then uh, set the, you know, you can attenuate how much that LFO is going to affect that pitch. Um, and essentially it's like your hand going like this on the pitch knob, except it's doing it for you. So it's like having an extra hand to do that with. And that's one of the beauty, uh, one of the beauties of modular synthesis. But this is where modulation routing comes into granulate. So it may be making it even harder for me to not use this, um, which is really cool. So you, I could put an LFO onto the tuning here. Or for example, um, it might be better suited on something else for example um, well you can do it on all of these and you can put different LFOs on them and then um, you can put sequences on them too so for example let's see uh, let's put an LFO on, on density and then we can see how that sounded So in modulation, I can change this LFO here. So this is where it comes really great. It's like having a modular synthesizer for one specific module, but you have all of the other things like an LFO source and a sequencer source. So I can turn the rate of it down. Change the wave. So I don't know if you can hear what's going on there because it's quite subtle and ambient, but essentially what's happening is there's an LFO going like this to the density. If you watch the density where it's essentially going like that. Um, and, and it's the same for any of these, really. So if I just go crazy with this and just put an LFO on all of them, you'll start to hear a lot of stuff changing quite a lot of the time. Um, why not? Let's just do it to everything. See how it goes. So it gets a bit crazy, but you get the gist. Now, to compare what I've done with beads for this specific sample, is, and I've done lots of different things with it, and this is where beads, I, this is one feature I really love about beads. Um, you can actually change the, uh, the kind of mode that you're putting it through, like the algorithm, basically. So you're putting sound through it, and then as it's processing it, there's a, a separate effect button, and you can kind of change the lo-fi of it. So there's just kind of crystal clear digital sound. There's one up from that, which is slightly more lo-fi. And then there's, I can't remember what it's called, but it's like a green one. It's really nice. And then there, it's subtle, though. Then there's sunset which is like kind of in between like super lo-fi and the green one. And then you've got like a super lo-fi one, which is purple. And um, I've basically used a mixture of all of them with this modular. You can see here, I've got all these different modular sounds. Um, and basically, uh, I've done a bunch of other things to the density, but to kind of put it into perspective compared to granulate, this is what I've used it for.
and I've used it over here too. And to put that into the context of the piece. And then again over here, I'll just lead up to it. So you get the gist, it's basically there to create an ambience, texture, kind of crystal-y type sounds happening. But also, um, specifically within this, in the advert, which um, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to show you at the moment, so I won't bother putting it up, but in the advert there's all these kind of like really cool 3D CGI textures with beads, like kind of colourful beads, like kind of flowing around the screen, and it really kind of sounds, it looks like it sounds like that basically. So um, I'm, I thought that was a great use for the, for the beads module in this track, and it's kind of subtle, it's a part of it, but when you take it away, it, I mean it just makes a massive difference really. This is without. This is with. So as you can tell, it just it kind of makes a nice subtle difference to the texture. More so in this section, uh, where we've with the earlier one here. So that's kind of the overall features. I mean, there's so much I could go over with Granulate. You can put stuff in there. You you can change the different kind of grain effects. You can change the modular routing of basically everything. You can then go into the modulation and change all of the sources of modulation. Very kind of fine tuning it. And then to add to that, it's got loads of effects built into this, which you can put onto it, um, which is really great. So it's packed full of features. You basically, if you're if if you're me five years ago or six years ago, and you're dying to get into modular synthesis and you're really into beads or something, uh, which is exactly what I was into, um, this is the this is the plugin for you basically because it's 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 a fraction of the price and it does very similar things. Now I would still buy beads if I had the money over it, but to have both in your arsenal or if you can't afford beads to have this as a sort of supplement. Um, instead, it's it's a really really great uh, plugin overall, so I definitely recommend it for that. So you should definitely check it out. So moving on from that, now that we've talked about the overall free features and kind of how it handles granular synthesis, I'd like to talk about the internal synthesis which is going on. Now. It's a kind of a funny term to use for granulate because it doesn't really have any internal synthesis. Whereas beads does have internal synthesis. It's got an internal wavetable oscillator, which I can kind of go into. Um, and I'll, I'll try all that out for you in a minute uh, to kind of show you a little bit about how that sounds. But um, in, in, in uh, granulate, what it's got is a bunch of presets. So as I go through everything, um, also, I forgot to mention, by the way, it's got this really cool kind of morph pad here. So what you can do um, is you can load in different samples and then morph between them a little bit like you can do in the Alchemy plugin for Logic. But I'll go into that in more detail later. But uh, basically, what we've got here in Granulate, we've got... Um, I'm just going to load up the solo one for now. In fact, no, what we want to look at is the presets. So the reason I'm looking at the presets is because within Beads there's this internal wavetable oscillator, which kind of puts it a cut above this, because it doesn't have that. But what you can do with this is kind of, it, it's very, it's a different feature, which makes it just as good of a thing, to, a tool to have. So it's got all of these presets, and you can make any sound you want into a similar sounding preset, but just to name a few, Aching Piano, for example. So instead of having a cool synthesizer that I can kind of change in there, which is kind of really good for having a Eurorack system, I can use this pad that Fractal Sounds have created for Aching Piano. Which, as you can see, kind of travels through the sample that they've loaded in here for us. Uh, and, and it does a bunch of other stuff too. There's a little bit of modulation routing, the grain effects haven't really been played with much, but you can kind of see what's going on here. It's all in this front, you know, on the hood, basically. Now, uh, let's go to a different one. For a so, I actually quite like the sound of uh, Dream Key, so let's have a little look at that and see what that sounds like. Okay. So 
So as I'm playing this, I'm just gonna... kind of reminding me a little bit of um, hybrid keys by uh, Native Instruments here. It's a really cool uh, instrument where you can kind of select between two sounds and morph them together and that's what this has built in um, with a bunch of different sounds. Post-apocalyptic clav. I mean this sounds amazing. What's this going to be like? So as you can see there's already some modulation sources going into this morph pad too. Um, and, and all these different slots, different samples, they're all being independently controlled. And look, you've got modulation happening here. And and within that, the grain sizes are all different. And the modulation sources have been altered. And they've done all this for you. So you've got a lot of options here. Um, and I think, again, it only adds to why you should probably have this in your library. Um, because it's just really good. But I will show you what beads can do just so that you can, can kind of compare the two. But, uh, so I'll just jump over to my Eurorack now and uh, we can have a little look at that, so. So, um, in this module you can kind of twiddle with this knob here and change the different um, oscillator type that you're going through. Uh, it's called a wavetable, so there's different wavetables you can go through and it changes the sound, basically. So I'll just show you that. And then with this knob, you can kind of change the filter of it. So it kind of just makes it a little bit quieter. And then you've got the pitch knob here. Um, so you can change the pitch. It's pretty simple. It's not a whole lot else the oscillator actually does. Um, these other knobs here don't really do a whole lot. Uh, it's, it's more just to do with the pitch, the wavetable, and the filter. But the great thing is, is that you can then put that through beads uh, as a sort of texture synthesizer. And it's really cool that you can get some effects kind of in-house if you like. So I'll just kind of, you know, show you what that kind of sounds like as we go through some of the sounds so you can get a bit of a better gist for it. I also would like to mention that you can still attenuate the pitch um, by putting something like a keyboard you can plug into it. Um, essentially you know, a volt per octave thing in there and it's got a built-in reverb too so you can really kind of get a nice synthesizer sound out of this um, and there's a lot you can do with it. But yeah this is kind of how you change the, the granular side of things now. You can kind of just add that in as a kind of wet dry knob um, which is the one just below the pitch there so you can kind of really make a sound interesting and spooky or really textural and ambient, it's, it's great. There's some of those granules that you can hear now coming in now that I've changed the density size and the granule size. So obviously beads, amazing, sounds great. You can do an awful lot with it and uh, just within that one module, if you've got a couple of modulation sources that you can play with, it can do some really, really crazy stuff. So um, I think that it's definitely worth looking into beads a little bit more. And if you're interested in learning more about beads as a, as a module, as a hard done a kind of deep dive in this video here. Um, so definitely check that out. But in any case, um, I'd like to kind of compare one more feature about these two different items. Now, what this feature is, is going to be the sound source inputs. So in Granulate, we've got four potential slots that we can load in and the master controller to go through them all. So if you just load solo, it will just look like this, basically. But if you load the four, you'll be presented with the master controller, which is the morph pad we were talking about. And then you've got four things, four sounds you can load in here. Any sound you want could be completely different. It could be a piano, uh, one of them could be a lightning strike, literally anything you want. And then you can do all sorts of mold, mold, molding, morphing between those. And and that is a very versatile feature. I really think that it's worth checking that one out a little bit more. 
But to compare that to beads, unfortunately beads doesn't have that level of versatility. It only has two input sources and they're actually supposed to be used as a stereo in. So fortunately it's left and right because everything in Eurorack is pretty much mono. It's kind of stereo is a kind of extension of that, it's a bonus. But um, basically you've got left and right. So if you wanted to, you could put two, but they'd be panned automatically to left and right, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but it is what it is. If you really wanted to, you could use um, one of these cables, which I'll just show you. So basically in the cable, it's got this kind of like little extra slot here that you can put another cable into, like so. Um, and what that means is that you can put one source from this end into left, but then you can also put another source into left through this little hole here. So that's a really nice little feature that uh, you kind of can do with modular, which so technically you could get four sources into beads, but you can't controllably control all of them and you can't morph between them. You're just kind of stuck with beads processing four really different sounds and it's going to be a kind of a bit of a bit of a clusterfuck basically. But um, I think I think it's definitely worth trying because that's kind of the beauty of beads that's a limitation and sometimes limitations lead to some of the most profound results um and i often find that it can be easier to come up with stuff with the limitations whereas with this i've got so many options it's almost hard to know where to start but having those options is not a bad thing at all and it is something that i really love about this library so I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Um, I certainly learned a lot about the different comparison points here and I think that it's definitely worth having a look at Leeds into Granulate. I'll leave a link in the description. As I said, it's 69 pounds, dollars, euros. Um, Beads isn't actually being sold brand new anymore. It's it's not being produced anymore. There's probably some third parties that are doing it because I'm pretty sure it's open source, but I think it's, it's quite expensive. So uh, depending on the seller, like for example, if I, you know, it would be someone like myself selling the module now. Um, the value is going to change a bit over the course of time, but they're around 350, I think, which is about what I paid for it brand new. So it depends. I'm sure you could get some cheaper than that. So have a look into it. Make your own mind up. Maybe you don't want any of it, but it's definitely worth thinking about. It's a really interesting, fun thing to get into. And um, I certainly wish that I knew about this about five years ago when I started thinking about getting into modular because I would have got this and messed around with it so much. It's so, it's so awesome, so yeah. But anyway, thanks again for watching. Please subscribe, like, comment, and put the notifications bell on. And I'll see you for the next one. See you later, bye.